Good evening and welcome uh, to the CSB webinar on the uh, webinar briefing on, around TCR disclosure in the EU and under the EU Non-Financial Reporting Directive. Uh, thank you for tuning in at the end of your day. Uh, this will be, uh, I promise, a short briefing uh, and we will have you on your way to enjoy your evening uh, by six o'clock. Um, today we'll have a, uh, you have uh, me uh, presenting to you. Uh, my name is Michael Zimini. I'm the Policy and External Affairs Director at CDSB, as well as my colleague uh, Fiona Quinlan, uh, Corporate Engagement Manager at uh, CDSB, who leads our work on uh, assessing uh, companies reporting uh, across the EU and also in other jurisdictions. And um, we're very excited to be talking to you this evening. Uh, there's a lot happening in, in Europe, and uh, if you're tuning in from other jurisdictions, welcome. Uh, I'm sure that you will have uh, uh, some, some interesting uh, factoids to take with you as well. Um, and we thought we'd, we'd uh, quickly have a, a discussion with you today about what's happening, where is the current state of reporting in Europe in regards uh, to the TCFD recommendations. And just last week, we also had uh, the TCFD itself launch its status report and a few pieces of guidance and even a consultation. So we'll take the opportunity to give you uh, a summary of that as well so that you, you know what's happening there as well. So this is our agenda. Uh, it's going to be a lot of uh, very uh, uh, useful uh, content, we hope. And um, we'll begin with with Fiona uh, taking you through the uh, taking you through the uh, the current set of reporting. Um, and um, I believe you have your slides there. Wonderful. Over to you, Fiona. Sure. Thank you, Mike, and welcome everyone to today's webinar. It's great to join you all. So as Mike said, um, I wanted to share with you an overview of a recent briefing that we published on TCFD disclosure under the EU Non-Financial Reporting Directive. And just summarise some of the key insights that we gained from this and, and what we think it can tell companies and, and policymakers about how reporting can be improved. So to start with, just to give a little background on TCFD in the context of the EU, uh, for those who might not be familiar with it. So the EU Non-Financial Reporting Directive uh, came into force three years ago now and required uh, large companies to disclose uh, several different aspects relating to issues on uh, environmental matters alongside a range of other non-financial topics. Uh, so you'll see on the screen there the aspects that they were required to disclose. And the directive required companies to put this information into their annual report, although it did provide for member states to allow them to publish it in a separate report, provided it was within six months of the annual report's uh, balance sheet date. And then alongside the directive, there's since been uh, several sets of guidance released uh, to accompany it um, in a non-binding nature. So the first set of guidance uh, released in 2017 was general in nature. Um, but then interestingly, uh, climate related guidance was published in 2019. So just click on, please. Sorry, just the, the next, thank you. Um, so the climate related guidance I think is just worth mentioning here because this is specifically where the TCFD recommendations were brought into the context of the Non-Financial Reporting Directive. So this guidance set out for companies how they could uh, respond to the TCFD recommended disclosures within the context of that reporting um, and really sends a clear signal to European companies that it was an expectation that they would align to the TCFD. So it's interesting I think in, in our review to consider to what extent this is happening so far. Next slide, please. So the report um, that we're kind of mentioning today is our, our Falling Short report that we published in May of this year. And this really highlighted um, from our review of 50 large European companies uh, reporting um, from 2019 that there are still further improvements needed on climate disclosure in Europe. So we identified a number of kind of key areas of strength and weakness in reporting to date. The strengths were kind of relating to aspects that perhaps may have been more familiar to companies in their reporting already. So um, reporting KPIs on climate and environment, uh, reporting their policies and due diligence and explaining their business model. However, where we saw weaknesses, um, these were linked quite closely to aspects that linked to the TCFD. So weaknesses related to things like the, the principal risk disclosures on climate change, uh, to the explicit adoption of the TCFD, and also to uh, how well that they were clarifying the materiality of climate and environmental information in their reports. 
And finally, we also saw at an overall level that the comparability and coherence of reporting um, was an area that really did need improvement. So between uh, different companies, you know, we saw quite a lot of different formats for reporting um, that would make it hard for investors to, to compare peers. Um, and when we looked at the coherence, so that's, you know, how well was uh, reporting linked together? How, how clearly did it tell a story? Um, we saw some challenges there too. So if we move on now to just an overview from our specific briefing on TCFD. So this briefing that we've published really just summarizes the key in insights from the falling short report relating to TCFD in a shorter kind of more digestible format that focuses on these. So firstly, on the government's elements that relate to TCFD, we did see that three quarters of companies in our sample were disclose, disclosing their board and management responsibilities. However, often the climate related aspects of this specifically uh, had to kind of be implied from the, the report and they weren't necessarily clarified to the extent that the TCFD would ask for. For example, they may have been included within broader governance arrangements on sustainability, but it was unclear perhaps how the specific aspects of climate change, for example, its, it's long term nature would be dealt with through this process. Process. And then secondly, on the, the strategy pillar of TCFD, um, which calls for uh, disclosure of risks and the use of scenario analysis. On the, the risk disclosure side, we saw that just over half of companies were considering the two main risk types set out within the TCFD recommendations of physical and transition risks. But clearly that meant that, that almost the same number of companies hadn't yet kind of adopted this framing of risk analysis that the TCFD called for. Secondly, we saw that where companies were asked to clarify the short, medium and long term timeframes um, of which they expected to be impacted by climate risk, um, that only 6% were able to provide this level of clarity in, this report, in their reporting. And then finally on strategy, uh, we saw that uh, the use of scenario analysis to disclose resilience was still very much a practice that was only adopted by a small number of companies with, with just 14% providing this. So if we turn to risk management now, uh, kind of the high level message here was that uh, we did see that quite a lot of companies were integrating climate change within their risk management, uh, either evidence through specific descriptions of this or, or through the fact that they were disclosing climate risks um, as a result of their risk uh, processes. However, again, this is an area where disclosures could be clearer. So often uh, integration perhaps could be inferred, but the, the specific way in which climate change was being dealt through risk management processes uh, wasn't always clarified. And then finally, looking at metrics and targets. Um, again, I think this is an area where there, there were some strong elements. So we saw that uh, all companies were disclosing their carbon emissions and, and a very large share were also disclosing metrics such as their energy usage and water. Um, however, I think uh, particular areas of improvement where, where more companies are uh, reporting on their, their value chain, scope three emissions, and also uh, providing more clarity about the distinction between what were the uh, wider indicators that a company might report for transparency and what were the real key indicators that it was using to manage the, the implementation of its climate strategy. So I think the overall picture we saw here um, really kind of sits quite closely with the, the global picture that we, we see from, from the likes of the recent TCFD status report um, that Mike will share about. I think what's what's interesting to consider in Europe, though, is that this, this has been adopted into guidance um, alongside the directive which supports companies in disclosing environment and climate information. So it is unsurprising perhaps that you would see somewhat higher levels of disclosure as a result of this. However, it does still show that even with um, this legislative context, it's still really kind of falling short of, of adoption in full by companies with, with some of the, the crucial aspects around scenario analysis only adopted by a minority still. So if we just move on to the next slide. So based on um, the insights and kind of uh, value that we got from this research, we pulled out some, some key, I guess, takeaways for companies in terms of how they could start to improve TCFD disclosure in the context of the European Directive. So firstly, um, the points that we led with was that they should clarify the materiality of environment and climate information. As we've said, often this wasn't clear. Um, it left... Uh, kind of gaps regarding how the materiality of information had been determined and, and what criteria were used to this. Um, we recommend for TCFD disclosure that companies use the uh, financial materiality criteria that are 
used to prepare the rest of their mainstream report for their climate disclosure. Um, and this consistency will help with uh, the usability of this information for investors. Secondly, um, we then recommend that information that has been identified as material um, from a financial perspective is included in the mainstream report. Uh, so although uh, companies are quite often using separate publications at the moment for TCFD disclosure, this does mean this information can be quite dis disconnected from financial information. And really, if information is considered to be financially material, it should be sitting alongside the wider financial performance so it can be understood in this context. And then finally, we recommend aligning disclosures on environment more broadly under the Non-Financial Reporting Directive with the TCFD core elements to ensure, as I've termed it, concise specificity. So this is really, I guess, around making best use of the legislation and the guidelines that sit beside it to provide as in an integrated disclosure as possible. At the moment, we see that companies are quite often treating non-financial reporting uh, in Europe and the TCFD as, as two separate exercises, um, which really is leading to quite lengthy reporting and, and probably quite a lot of burden on companies. So we'd really encourage them to, to take the opportunity to achieve more concise disclosure if they can by integrating these two requirements. So just moving on now to the, the kind of policy focus of our, of our recommendations, we also put forward a series of recommendations for how the directive itself could be improved to support better TCFD disclosure. And I think this is obviously quite crucial timings wise at the moment because the, the European Commission are currently uh, looking at revision of the directive as we speak. So this really is the ideal opportunity to adopt these uh, recommendations more strongly. So firstly, um, we call for removing the exemption to allow non-financial statements outside the mainstream report. Um, as I've already touched upon, this will improve coherence and consistency um, and allow the TCFD uh, kind of recommendation around mainstream reports to be achieved consistently. Secondly, we've recommended that the, the principal risk disclosures required under the directive uh, ensure that an emphasis is placed on both the risks and impacts uh, that the business has on the environment and risks to the business, which is the lens that the TCFD looks for um, and was actually the, the less commonly adopted lens that we saw in reporting to date. Thirdly, um, a, a kind of simple one, but the directive at the moment only refers broadly to environmental matters. So for full clarity, we, we recommend that the word climate be incorporated into the directive itself so that it is clear that this is an expectation as a subject to report upon. And finally, related to that, again, clarifying that the TCFD recommendations should be embedded within the directive itself, uh, rather than sitting as they do at the moment in separate guidance. Um, this would help you know, remove the ambiguity around what kind of disclosure is expected. So finally, just touching upon um, our next steps for 2020. If we can just move on. There we go. Um, so our latest review of reports um, has just been finalised, in fact, and we'll be communicating the results of this on the 7th of December. Um, so there'll be some details at the end of this uh, presentation for how you can register for this event. So this um, launch will share the 2020 review that has just been undertaken of, of most recent reports. So it will be interesting uh, to share more with you on that. But I guess at a high level, um, we do see very much some similar challenges as we've seen this year. Um, although the picture is somewhat improving, it really is those, those recommendations regarding scenario analysis um, and the strategic aspects of TCFD that are proving challenging. Um, and Michael share some more, some more thoughts on that uh, after me. Just finally, I also wanted to mention that we will be uh, conducting um, feedback sessions for companies uh, on the results of this assessment. So um, we'll be obviously sharing more details on what those companies are in the report, but uh, it will include uh, those from within Europe that were reviewed last time. So if that happens to be you and you're, you're interested in hearing these insights, please do feel free to get in touch with us now and we'd be very happy to, to arrange to share those with you. So I'll hand over now Mike to Mike, who's going to uh, share with you a bit more on the broader perspective as TCSD as well. Thank you very much, Fiona, and uh, thank you very much for this overview. I, um, before we move on, I just have one quick question. And if you do have questions, uh, if you are wherever you're joining us from, you can use the chat function of the platform. We are streaming this through various platforms. But if you do, uh, you 
put your questions in the chat. They will, uh, it should reach us hopefully. Uh, but before, and uh, there's a, thank you very much. There's helpfully an email address as well on your screen, info at cdsb.net. If for some reason the chat function isn't working or you can't uh, find it, just send us an email as well. And we are monitoring that as well. So uh, before I quickly move on, I just wanted to pick up on a point you you made, a, a term you've used, concise specificity, which I, I really uh, liked. And you know, there's, there's the, certainly it's a, it's a challenge to cover so many various requirements, so many material issues while remaining concise as well. And I'm not sure if you can give us a bit of an idea of, uh, is there is there some sort of an ideal length or, or, or that you've seen or, or what, what seems to have been a good length of disclosures uh, in your experience? Mm. In our report, we do, do highlight the real variation we see here. So I think the longest uh, specific environment and climate uh, disclosure in an annual report we saw ran to, to 70 pages, and, and that was within the annual report, you know, not, not a separate document. So uh, they can be very long. But I think really some of the more effective ones were, were much shorter, maybe five to 10 pages, perhaps. And um, I think the ways that companies kind of achieved this through, were through really clear signposting within the report so that um, you know, you're able to evidence uh, the specific ways in which climate change as a standalone issue that warrants focus um, is reflected, but also you're capitalizing on, on what you're already providing in your annual report elsewhere on, on risk management or on governance, for example. So I think, um, yeah, keeping the, the climate specific section as, as tight as possible, but using good cross-referencing and, and signposting within your report to other sections um, is, is what I've seen as, as the most effective solution to that issue. That's a very helpful tip. Thank you very much, Fiona. And, uh, and you know, we do see uh, extensive disclosures on, on websites and other sort of, you know, CDP questionnaires and others uh, that are also, I, I believe, quite, you know, as you said, cross-referencing can be a, a very efficient and effective uh, way as well. So uh, just before I move on to my uh, section, I wanted to flag up that this is uh, based on one of the briefings that we have produced uh, of our findings, specifically around the TCFD. But we have a, a, a range of briefings, both in terms of topics, but also in terms of certain EU member states, namely France, Germany, and Poland. And they are available on our website. And if you go uh, to our website, uh, you can also sign up for some of the briefing events we are, we'll be holding uh, in the next few weeks, actually, on these topics as well. We'll promise to keep them concise so that we get you the information and uh, and uh, don't hold you as a second longer than we have to. I know uh, there are quite a lot of webinars happening these days. So with this in mind, uh, and I hope you, you will uh, look at those briefings and sign up to those events, I'll quickly uh, walk you through some of the uh, some of the highlights of the, the TCFD's uh, announcement last week. Um, as as uh, you might know, uh, they have announced their third uh, status report, and um, I would like to acknowledge that uh, the source of, of the slides coming uh, to you are, are the TCFD itself, and we have a uh, we have uh, 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 taken content from them, um, but uh, this, you know, just last week the TCFD has announced its uh, third status report. Um, so therefore, they are looking at uh, a trend now uh, over a three-year period and and seeing uh, portraying a picture of, of the direction of travel, uh, which is which is quite interesting as well. Um, they have also looked at, um, at at some of the users, talked to some of the users of the information, and um, and um, and, and provided some information on what is most useful for for the users. Uh, in this case, those financial decision makers uh, that reading a TCI disclosure. They have also uh, commented on some of the top issues that they've identified, and uh, we'll talk about it in a second. And they have some uh, they have some experiences and lessons learned that uh, companies have 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 uh, shared with them, uh, as well as some major initiatives that support the TCFD including uh, the TCFD Knowledge Hub, uh, which uh, we host on behalf of the task force as well. And we uh, highly recommend you visit that as well if you are looking for more resources or more learning materials uh, on the TCFD recommendations. So that's the the, the status report. And um, with that in mind, uh, some key takeaways I'd like to share you uh, from the report on the next slide, please. Um, obviously, uh, we are all aware of the fact that there is an increase in the, in the number of supporters of the TCFD. Uh, and actually, since 2019, an 85% increase um, with Japan leading the way. And uh, if you are uh, interested in some, some interesting uh, 
you know, leadership and some some very good guidance. I do uh, suggest that you look at uh, Japan TCFD implementation consortium's uh, work. They have some excellent uh, guidance also for users of information again, um, and as well as scenario analysis and other other areas. So they have found uh, the TCFD has found that uh, of course there is an increase in disclosure, but uh, it is not uh, as at, at not where it, it needs to be, and and so we shouldn't. Uh, you know, rest on our laurels just yet. Um, in particular, um, the you know, the F of the TCFD financial disclosures, climate rate financial disclosures are uh, lagging behind, and and you know they are challenging for, to some to some businesses as well to to do uh, to report on. Um, it might not come to, as a surprise that energy and materials companies uh, are are leading disclosures. Of course, climate change is a serious issue in both sectors, and so. Um, those uh, sectors have done some great work, also learning from previous uh, work uh, that they have done. Um, the uh, dis disclosure on the resilience of strategies is also an area of uh, that needs further improvement. Only one in 15 companies uh, have reported on this area. Of course, a very e key area uh, for a financial decision maker assessing uh, your business. Um, and so it's an important uh, area to, to focus on as well. And um, as I mentioned, there are some areas of, of, of uh, that they have identified as 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 key for decision make for investor decision making, which uh, are actually on the next slide. Um, I found this uh, list actually quite helpful. Uh, a top ten from the TCFD on uh, what is most useful in terms of elements of of, of disclosure um, based on the recommendations and also the guidance uh, for all sector. So I, I mean I think I, I I will not speak to too many of them um, at 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 great, great lengths, but of course um, it's all about how uh, a company's business and strategy is uh, affecting a business and its future and what the business is is doing. Um, and we often focus on on the metrics, which are of course very important, but it's also important to. To describe what they mean and 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 also think of the disclosure as not just as a, as a disclosure of of your greenhouse gas emissions but really a disclosure of of your governance of your risk management and and the processes you have a place to to manage what may come uh, your way as well so on the next slide um we have uh i've also uh taken a, a summary of uh, other pieces of work that the TCFD has launched uh, yesterday as well, or last week. Um, the status report gives a, a very good overview and some and some good um, tips and tricks uh, or, or areas of focus uh, for, for companies. But alongside that, um, the TCFD has also, as promised, uh, uh, launched a guidance uh, on scenario analysis for non-financial companies, that is companies not in the finance sector, and also guidance on integrating climate-related risks into existing risk management processes and then disclosing those. And that's a very important um, piece of guidance as well. You know, the whole premise of, of the TCFD is climate-related risks are just like any other risks. And that you already have in your businesses is existing enterprise risk management systems in place uh, that are suitable to track these, these risks and, um, and also, of course, be the basis of your disclosures. Um, uh, I, I, I think I'm, I think uh, uh, you'll all agree with me that uh, we could probably do another hour-long uh, webinar just on scenario analysis. It's the it's uh, the the hot topic and and perhaps some of the most challenging uh, that businesses find uh, when implementing uh, the TCFT recommendations. So uh, we're very happy to to see this guidance um, as well. And last but not least, uh, there is also a consultation that is now open. And it is open until um, January. Uh, the TCFD is, is consulting uh, on its document on forward-looking metrics for the financial sector as well. So, if you are uh, a stakeholder of that of that sector or are in the sector, we very much encourage you to to visit the TCFD's website and, uh, of course, uh, provide your feedback. I'm sure it will be very helpful for the TCFD as well. So this is a whirlwind tour of the TCFD status report and uh, some of the uh, other guidances that they have produced. Um, I hope this is a uh, good food for thought and will um, help you find the, the right document to start with. Um, there's a lot to, re to read and uh, we very much encourage you to, to uh, assess those as well. Um, 
I also uh, wanted to offer our support as you go through uh, the implementation of the TCFT. There is, uh, you know, we, we do the TCFT status report, but also our own findings show that companies do have a while to go to implement the TCFT fully. But the, 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 the important thing to know is that you are not alone in this. Um, we are uh, very lucky to have been, um, to have secured funding from the EU Life program to be able to uh, provide a, uh, a campaign, uh, a supporting campaign to businesses in Europe um, and support them through uh, implementing the TCFT recommendations. That means that we, you, we, would, we can provide you with, with access to our experts, including Fiona and uh, others in, in our technical team, and um, f help you with some of those challenges or, or roadblocks that you might come across. We can look at your reporting and uh, pr provide you with specific feedback on areas of improvement and provide you with examples of good practice that are, that are also uh, very uh, helpful uh, for you as well. There's a lot of, lot, uh, of changes in, in the policy side and um, my team uh, also with, with our team also based in Brussels uh, can help you keep up to date uh, with these developments and, and make sure that you are following the right developments as well. And we have uh, a wealth of workshops uh, coming up and resources available to help you uh, implement the TCLT recommendations. Most importantly, as I mentioned, this is a free of charge service. Uh, it is there to help you do the best that you can. So with that in mind, um, and we have uh, four minutes left, um, perhaps uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, Fiona, uh, a question. And um, you know, there's, there's, uh, I, w I wonder whether uh, you see any differences uh, in Europe versus what the, the TCFD uh, sort of has highlighted in terms of the issues that are covered. Um, obviously, um, we have the non-financial reporting directive in Europe. We have the, uh, the, the non-binding guidelines to support this work. And at the moment, of course, a lot of focus is happening, is, is, is uh, going towards implementing this work uh, even further into policy making. So is, is Europe uh, a, a sort of a, along the same lines as, as the rest of the world or, or, or are there any, any regional differences? Sure. So I think um, I think what we've seen in Europe is really that the directive has definitely shifted the baseline upwards in terms of overall disclosure. Um, you know, we're seeing all of the companies, the large companies that we review, able to provide reporting on on kind of a base level. And you know, there's recognition from from all companies in their reporting now of climate change as an issue. And I think the directive. For me, would certainly have played a role in, in shifting at that baseline, so that it's on the agenda for for all companies. Um, I think you know the picture. Otherwise, in terms of where companies uh, perhaps are struggling with the TCFD and, and where they need more support, it is very similar. And I think um, it, it's great, obviously, as you shared that the TCFD has produced some some more practical guidance on scenario analysis in particular. I think that will be very much welcomed by companies because I think certainly uh, consistently within Europe as to, to other jurisdictions, we did see that area in particular as a challenge. Um, so I think that you know the picture in Europe is promising because it does show the role that legislation can play in shifting the bar but it also shows that you know the more specific that legislation can be um you know the better an outcome you'll get because i think as, as we touched upon um that lack of specificity and what's required under the directive at the moment does mean that we're not seeing you know as consistent a, an improvement as we like so um yeah, hopefully that, that kind of model from Europe of, of setting a bar and then continuing to raise it is something that um, other countries um, can learn from too. And, and I know that some are already, of course, doing the same kinds of things as well. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, I think, you know, there, there is a, a center of excellence developing in, in, uh, in Europe that uh, will hopefully, as you said, inspire uh, other jurisdictions as well. So I did promise to keep you, uh, to, to, to keep this uh, webinar, uh, until six o'clock, so uh, uh, perhaps we'll, we'll draw to a close. Uh, with that in mind, thank you very much for joining us uh, this evening. Um, if we can be of any support, please uh, do get in touch with us. And uh, we hope that you'll join us in a future webinar. And we, of course, will have the, uh, the latest findings coming up uh, just next month. So please do keep our, follow our, our social, us on our social channels uh, so that you can uh, be notified when uh, that is published. Thank you very much. And thank you to you, Fiona, as well. Bye. Thanks, Mike, and thanks everyone for joining. Bye.